Hello everyone and welcome to my next tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about the ribs x-ray. So technically ribs are difficult to evaluate in plain x-ray due to the surrounding structures and their uh, curved anatomy and may put the technologies into trouble. So here in this lecture I'm going to give you some notes and advice which may help you to perform a proper and diagnostic x-ray. Okay, so let's begin with the term bony thorax, which consists of a sternum, thoracic vertebra, and 12 pairs of ribs which are connecting them together. The bony thorax protects important organs of respiratory system, heart, and great vessels. The most common types of indication for ribs x-rays is broken ribs, which may cause pneumothorax, hemothorax, or pulmonary contusion. Because ribs fractures have been linked to a high rate of associated injuries, confirming rib fracture with a plain x-ray can help physicians to get proper inter interventions. Also, for every three cases of a spontaneous rib fracture, one of them is due to metastatic disease like breast cancer or other conditions like osteoporosis and other diseases can also weaken bones and lead them to fracture. Alright, let's continue with the anatomy of the ribs as it's very important and helpful for technologists to always Bear in mind the shape and anatomy of the ribs. This may help them to choose the correct projections and angle of the tube to take a proper x-ray. So, each rib is numbered according to the thoracic vertebra to which it's attached. Therefore, the ribs are numbered from top to down. The first seven pairs of ribs are considered true ribs. And the term false ribs applies to the last five pairs numbered 8 to 12, which the last two pairs, 11 and 12, are the floating ribs, which are unique in that they do not possess costural cartilage. And in this drawing, you can also see the typical rib from inferior view. Note the body extends laterally and then angles forward and downward. This angulation is termed as the angle of the rib. Alright, so the projections we're performing in ribs examinations are determined by the patient history. So if the history is not provided by the physician, you must obtain a complete clinical history that includes the followings. Number one, the nature of the complaint. Is it the acute or chronic? And how the injury occurred? Is it caused by trauma or its chronic pain caused by underlying disease? Number two, location of the pain or injury, which is the main item that must be considered by technologists to choose the right position and projection. And number three, does the patient have difficulty in breathing? So you will understand whether the injury may be caused by trauma to the thoracic cavity. Also, before beginning the study, you should determine whether the patient is able to stand or not. Above or below the diaphragm. Okay, so the location of the patient complaint determines which region of the ribs is to be imaged. Is it above or below the diaphragm? The upper nine posterior ribs generally represent the minimum number of ribs above the diaphragm and full inspiration. However, with painful ribs, the patient may not be able to take as deep inspiration. Thus, only eight posterior ribs may be seen above the diaphragm. In that case, you should take the radiograph in erect position if the patient is able to, because gravity will assist to lowering the diaphragm and also allows patient to take deeper breath, which again suppresses the diaphragm. So you need to do the exposure at the end of the suspend inspiration 
and as upper ribs are surrounding by lying tissue, a lower curve voltage will preserve better contrast. And to demonstrate the ribs below the diaphragm, you should first take the radiograph with the patient recumbent, mostly supine. This allows the diaphragm to rise to the highest position and result in a less thickness of abdomen. Because the abdomen fatten when patient lying down, so this provides better visualization of the uh, lower ribs through abdomen structures. And you need to do the exposure at the end of suspended expiration. And a medium kill voltage of 80 to 85 should be considered because the lower ribs are surrounding by uh, dense soft tissues, a higher kilo voltage will ensure proper contrast. Okay, so now you have the patient history and you know the location of complaint. So you know that the pain is posterior, anterior, lateral or is it above or below the diaphragm. So the next step is to choose the proper technique and position. Department routines may uh, vary depending on the preference of radiologist. However, one recommended routine is as follows. First, select the projections that will place the area of interest closest to the image receptor and rotate the spine away from the region of interest to prevent uh, superimposition. For example, if a patient has a history of trauma to the left posterior ribs, as you can see in this picture, uh, the two preferred uh, projections should be a straight AP and a left posterior oblique or LPO. Why we are choosing these views? Because uh, LPO or left posterior oblique will move a spinous process away from the left side and left posterior ribs are closest and parallel to the IR. So you can notice that uh, we also consider the ribs angle. Okay, let's have another example. A patient who has trauma to the right anterior ribs. Uh, so with the same mentioned reasons, the two projections are a straight PA and a left anterior oblique or LAO. Also the erect or recumbent position should be determined by uh, the level of injured ribs as it's above or below the diaphragm. Okay, we're almost done so let's just have some final notes. Uh, regarding patients, uh, pediatric patients, there are two primary concerns which are patient motion and safety. So a clear explanation of the procedure is required to obtain a maximal trust and cooperation from both patient and the guardian. Immobilization is of great importance to achieve proper positioning and reduce patient motion. Also, short exposure time with optimal milliampere and kilo voltage will reduce patient motion. To secure their safety, ensure that pediatric patients are voiced and uh, cured by a guardian. In case of old patients, time, patience and additional assistance is needed to achieve the required positions. And because of high incidence of uh, osteoporosis, the kilovoltage and milliampere second may require a decrease and also short exposure time is recommended to reduce the risk of motion. And finally, in case of obese patients, uh, these patients uh, do present some challenges in imaging of ribs. The easiest uh, landmark is jugular notch. You can use this to determine the upper border of sternum and ribs. Also, iliac crest can be used as a landmark to a lower edge of the ribs. Although the thoracic region looks larger in these patients, remember that thoracic structures are often the same dimensions. So, maintain uh, 
the same degree of collimation for ribs x-rays as with the other body sizes. And because of thickness of the anatomy, you need to adjust exposure factors by increasing the kilo voltage while keeping milliamp per second as low as possible to minimize radiation dose. All right, that's it. Thanks everyone for watching my video. If you have any question or suggestion, please don't hesitate to comment under the video and don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Thanks again.